He's a chef de cuisine at Sugar Toad Restaurant and founder of the Slow Food Upstate in Greenville, South Carolina, as well as a member of the American Institute of Wine and Food. Please put your hands together for Jeff Ryan, this talk on the core of our nation, the core of us. has begun. No longer do we want our sons and daughters to be fed the current government subsidized fodder as the vegetable of the day. I stand here today as a witness to the fact that agribusiness has to change for us to rearrange its impact on society. For you see, quietly, we have all suffered. Good afternoon. I'm here to talk about something I'm absolutely passionate about, food. It's sustainability in our food production systems today. To reference Maslow, at the very basic physiological level, we need food and water to survive. It is at the core of our survival. As we move forward in this dialogue, I don't even want to talk about the stuff in the center of grocery stores, folks. That's not food. It's been so modified and processed to the point where it has, a, has no true value to us anymore. To me, they're edible cartoons. Watch TV every single day. They're edible cartoons. We're gathered here tonight to build future, or build the future with our ideas. And while we bounce around ideas for the future, we'd do, be doing ourselves a great disservice if we forgot about our past, where we've come from. And all of our histories are chock full of the, the stories of the way things used to be. We used to be far less wasteful, not as a point of emphasis, but as a matter of necessity. My friend Caleb's great grandmother is telling me a story. At breakfast, she used to fold her napkin and put it in her shirt sleeve every morning. At lunch, she'd pull out that same napkin, put it back in. At dinner, pull it back out. Again, not as a point of emphasis, but as a matter of necessity. Now with the overabundance of resources out there, we've lost a connection to that. I'm sure that most of you uh, have, have shared many times around a table, slowing down and enjoying life. The good things in life, right? The old adage of stop and smell the roses and not get caught up in the hustle bustle of everyday life. We need to pres preserve our environment and our history for the benefit of future generations. We need to return to the commitment of those fundamental values. To know your food, know your farmer, know your community. It's the very core of who we are. Presently, our food system is a critical state. In 2008, 147 million pounds of beef was recalled. 37 million pounds of that made it into our school lunch programs. That's stuff your children are eating, folks. At the time, Iowa Senator Tom Harkin posed the question, how much longer will we continue to test our luck with weak enforcement of federal food safety regulations? This was just two years ago. And quietly, that answer hasn't been told. To celebrate the two-year anniversary this past January, another five million pounds of beef was recalled. Doesn't seem like that much in comparison, but in comparison to that five million pounds of beef, how many of us in this room knew about the 3.8 million Toyotas that were recalled? Everyone knew about that. Why don't we know about the beef that was recalled? The food, the very core of who we are, what we have to have to sustain our life. I say again, quietly, we have all suffered. There, here we go. Thomas Jefferson, one of our founding fathers, one of the first true great agrarian members of our societies. He said, cultivators of the earth are the most valuable citizens. They are the most vigorous, the most independent, the most virtuous, and they are tied to their country and wedded to its liberty and interests by the most lasting bands. 
way more profound than anything I'm going to say tonight, folks, but I think it rings true. Fundamentally, the definition of sustainability is meeting our core needs while utilizing our natural resources around us in a manner that behooves future generations. Sustainability and its development, it's fairly simple. The items on the left back here is what has to be sustained for us to progress and develop the things on the right. We have to build the foundation before we move forward on other things. In food, we must foster the land for it to, for it to possess its true value to us. There's a place in Ohio called the Chef's Garden that I deal with directly. Their principle of growing is to grow your soil and your soil will grow your plants. Seems so simple. However, conventional farming's methods are similar to mining where they strip the vital nutrients out of the soil. How can we expect to nourish ourselves without the nutrients in the foundation? You can't. But what a paradigm shift the chef's garden has created. They actually employ microbiologists, a, a family farm employing microbiologists who do uh, tests on soil composition. And they're looking at the microorganisms in the soil to see which ones benefit the soil better so they can grow a higher quality product for us. Happy Cow Creamery. Now, I'd never lived north of South Carolina before I moved here. And these are some of the folks down there, a gentleman named Tom Trantham. Now, Tom was a conventional dairy farmer and was the top producer in the state of South Carolina for seven to eight years when he first started. However, he was going broke. Feed costs constituted 65% of his gross income. 65% of his gross income. So he was going broke, and, and one night, the cows broke through their pens and ran across to a field that he had just let grow. And now, imagine Tom going broke and his cows break out. And in the middle of all his anger, he realized they were doing something. They were grazing. What was natural to them? The top half of the grasses. And as he did research, he soon learned that this was what the best thing for the cows was. Their milk production per cow per day went up five pounds a day. Now he calls it a cow to top. It was the shining moment where he learned that his cows were telling him what he wanted. It's, again, it seems so simple, but why isn't everybody doing it? For his efforts, in 2002, the USDA came out with an award called the Madden Award, and Tom was its inaugural recipient for his work in dairy farming. He developed a system called 12 Aprils, where they learned that in April, the milk production of cows was at its highest. So what Tom did was he strove to make sure that every single month was like April. Obviously, he wants production to be good. And so he now has 29 paddocks, which are just plots of land, that he just lets grow. And instead of bush hogging all the grasses, he lets the, the grasses, when he trims them, fall to the ground, and the cows can just come and graze on that. He doesn't even have dogs or, or anything to bring the, the cows up to the, the milking center. They just mosey in, mosey back out their fields. And each one of them has shade, has water, and has grasses to graze on in every single paddock. In the past, this model of sustainability was life. That's just the way we work, OK? The past 30 years, industrial agriculture now has made it so that it's a concept that we're trying to re-identify with. So in the past, this is how we were trying to live. Now it's a concept that we are reaching for to tr try to re-identify with. Now, farmers markets here in Naperville, Geneva, Chicago, the growth of these is encouraging. It shows that folks are starting to listen and pay attention. Farmers do not raise a pork chop. They raise a pig. As chefs, we have learned to become more versatile, whether it's any of the organs, 
or other cuts that just aren't as popular. You know, it's not just a ribeye, it's not just a pork chop. It's a full animal that we need to learn to utilize. And our job as chefs is hopefully to act as a resource for you folks. If you have questions of how to do it, let us show you. Call on us. There are so many chefs out there who are just as passionate about what they do, who wake up every day and love what they do. We need to revert back to the, to the uh, Native American ideology, ideology of total utilization. It's at the very core of who we are and the very core of what sustainability is. An ancient Indian proverb that stated, treat the earth well. It was not given to you by your parents. It was loaned to you by your children. We do not inherit the earth from our ancestors. We borrow it from our children. As the ones who make the decisions for the next future, or the future generations, we have to set them up for success. Our children, the future, we have to give a voice to them. When I was first asked to speak at this, I'm not a public speaker. I have nowhere near about the, the knowledge that these other guys have. And I was hesitant to accept it. However, eventually I sat down and thought about it, and it's not, it has nothing to do with me. It has to do with giving a voice to things that don't have one. Our children, my three nieces, the animals, the land that which we live in. At present, there has been talk that we are going to be the first generation who outlives our children. That's not exactly what I would call leaving a legacy. At the current rate, obesity could soon overtake tobacco as the number one cause of preventable death in the United States. Coincidentally, big tobacco and big food have the same marketing plans to disguise the truth from us all. Again, it's not exactly what I would call paying it forward. Now, I realize as a chef, I'm on the cusp of this issue every single day. But I want you to know that you can have the same impact. Farmers markets, joining a CSA. Do some research about what you're eating. Reestablish that relationship with your food. Some of us, the, the problem might lie in transparency. With 81% of our population residing in urban areas, we're not privy to the images of food production. However, if our labeling consisted of this, would you buy it? These are downed cows that to pass inspections, the middle slide shows a forklift lifting up that cow so that it will pass regulations. The other one's so sick and weak that it's being dragged up by a chain. I eat meat, folks. This isn't about being a vegetarian or anything like that. This is about the health and welfare of our animals and in doing so, our own health. The ramifications of this practice are extensive and trickle down through almost every single major issue we face as a nation. We need a reform food system that has stricter regulations and that supports the farms that promote land stewardship and animal husbandry. It is at the core of our food supply. Finally, Martin Luther King stated, all of life is interrelated. We are all caught in an inescapable network of mutuality tied to a single garment of destiny. What affects one directly affects all indirectly. You see sustainability at the very center of the economy, the society, environment. Folks, it's, it's just the reality of the situation. We need to redirect our attention to making long-term, effective, lasting decisions. Stop making things for the short term. They're just Band-Aids. Take a look at our food systems and the damage they have caused our health, the environment, and the economy. Urban gardening is an absolute catalyst for us re-identifying our relationship with food. The White House this year has the first garden since World War I era, in the Victory Garden of Eleanor Roosevelt. However, an amazing irony that while Michelle Obama is an is a advocate of urban gardening and has uh, joined the forces in combating childhood obesity, Mr. President has 
decided that in a way to combat our current economic woes, we begin exporting big agriculture. These are the same folks that are at the core of our problems. It's not the right answer. Another thing is health care is obviously a huge issue. However, while we're reforming health care, again, we're putting a Band-Aid over what really needs to be reformed. It's our food. If food's at the very core of all these problems, why do we continue putting Band-Aids on other things? Let's go to the core, the root, the very base of the problem, and fix that, and watch the effects trickle down. A core value of the American constitutional democracy is that the public requires that individual citizens have the commitment and motivation that you accept your obligation to promote the welfare of the community and to work together with other members for the greater benefit of all. That's what this nation was built upon. And to me, it sounds awfully like sustainability. When we leave here tonight, I would like to challenge all of you to go home and try a simple exercise. Cook with the whole family. Bring everyone around the table. Start a garden. Reconnect with your friends, your family, your community through food. Identify these relationships within your community and watch what happens in your own personal, li personal lives. Know that you are all empowered to make a change for the common good. Thank you for having me.